Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have some awesome news coming from the front lines. The Russian Volunteer Corps together with the Legion of Freedom started the assault operation against Russian forces. If we check out the latest military map update, you'll see the expansion of the Grey area. The Russian Volunteer Corps was successfully able to liberate a couple of the villages, but it already happened before. Just remember Shebekina the last year when those guys controlled the large part of the Russian territory for more than two months. And today they assault from the same position, so this is the checkpoint, the border between Ukraine and Russia. The Legion of Freedom published the address to Russians. They say that they're gonna take part in the future Russian elections. Locals published the video of the T-64 tank that went to the Russian territory. Is it the flag of the European Union? Well, actually not, it's the emblem of the Legion of Freedom. Also, there is one more attack vector in Belgrade Oblast. Here, the Russian position forces took the part of the local village Novaya Tavolshanka. Again, the fight for this village happened the last year, during the previous assault attempt of the Russian Volunteer Corps. And we have the third assault vector, it happened over here near to checkpoint. The fight isn't going for this tiny little village of Nehotivka. Also, some sort of the UAV targeted the Russian administrative building of Belgorod. Drone hit the front part of it. This video was published by Ukrainian sources saying that the Russian forces are withdrawing from Belgorod checkpoints. It is hard to say I cannot confirm this information. Honestly, I don't think that they are withdrawing the forces, probably regrouping. Oh, we have one more of the assault vector. This is in Kursk Oblast this time. The attack was directed towards the village of Totkina. So totally four of the attack vectors towards the Russian territory. Unfortunately, one of the tanks hit the mine at the checkpoint. Losing the track, but the crew is okay. I would say that the tank itself is also okay, just need to change the caterpillar and repair it a little, but I think that Ukraine would not be able to evacuate it from the front lines. Or from the Russian territory, it's better to say. This is the T-64 Ukrainian tank, which was leased by the Legion of Freedom, or the Russian Volunteer Corps. At the same time, the other tanks of the Russian Volunteer Corps break through the Russian defense and actively fight in the local villages. But Russian propaganda mostly concentrated on a single tank that was damaged by the mine. The commander of the Russian Volunteer Corps recorded a video from the Russian territory inside the tank, asking Russians to join this movement, but majority of Russians simply do not care. They're okay with their current president, so they're okay to be slaves of the Russian regime. I think that it is too early to call them to fight, but at some moment it might happen. There were many of the hardcore revolutions in the Russian history, so those guys do awesome job. What's about the other frontline updates? For the first time in the last three months, we have no movement from the Russian side. Well, honestly, Russians move, but good Russians and towards Russia. Russia lost one more Illusion 76 transport military airplane. It caputed near Moscow in Ivanova village. I posted this video on my Telegram channel, my friends, I'm unable to show you all of that stuff over here, so please follow me on Telegram to get more information about what is happening around Ukraine. But what can I tell you here as an aviation expert? <laughs> Sorry, my friends, I'm not the expert in any sort of the cases. However, I may say that clearly it is the engine fire. This airplane has four of the engines, and for me it's quite strange why the airplane even with engine fire, I wasn't able to continue the approach for the safe landing. Because the chance for the jet engine to damage your wing significantly, even in case of fire, is kind of low. Because you have the wing, let's say, and also the pylon and the engine. So it may burn, it might be damaged, it is still far away from the main elements, uh, the force elements of the wings, like the main longerns. There are some planes where the engine is mounted just in front of the wing, for example ATR-72 or 42. In this case, the engine fire might damage the wing itself, so it's better to land as soon as possible if you are unable to cope with fire and already discharge all of the fire bottles. And here you can see that the fire was extinguished, then the airplane went closer to the ground. Nevertheless, it lost the control and hit the ground. Even some of the parts separated from the airplane. 
and there is a dark cloud coming from the crash side. You may see that it's not really far away from the airfield because here we see one more plane on the apron. This is Antonov 74 or maybe even 72. Official Russia says that it was the bird strike that caused the engine fire and the loss of the aircraft control. I honestly do not believe in that. I think that the airplane was targeted, maybe in this case even by the Russian air defense. Because the last night many of the Russian infrastructural facilities were targeted by the drones. UAVs targeted Moscow region, Tula, Belgrade, Kursk, Orol, Voronezh and also Tambov. Here's for example the oil refinery facility in Tula. And this is again the oil refinery facility in Orol region. The Russian media say that the airplane crashed right into the local cemetery. Reduction of the workload, so the cemetery is now closed. Russia has already lost around 10 of the airplanes since Putin presented a saint icon to protect the Russian Air Force. Something definitely wrong with this totem. You see, the Russian Orthodox Church doesn't really help. This guy with the beard blessed this dead Buhanka. But as you can see, it didn't help. Bohanka was kaputted, exactly the same one with a huge grill on the top. Maybe Russian Orthodox Church doesn't work any longer. They should call shamans or Chechen Ahmad for blessing. A very interesting video of how Russians intercepted the Gemelres missiles, which were flying towards the S-400 Russian state-of-art air defense system. But not all of the shells were intercepted and one hit the system damaging it and also cause some of the wounds for the army personnel of the Russian crew. Again, I'll post it on my telegram. Finally, we have awesome news coming from the United States of America. The White House administration announced a new military support for Ukraine. It is not yet a big military package, but the United States will allocate around $400 million to produce and deliver to Ukraine the United States-made weaponry. By the way, including attack missiles. It could be a long-range modification, which might help Ukraine to cut the Kerch connection. Hmm. Also, this military package will help Ukraine to maintain the current weaponry we have. We have this article, White House expected to announce it's sending attack munitions to Ukraine. More attack -ams. it's awesome. Russia has reported that it hit one more Heimer, so this one, it was targeted with the help of the aviation bomb. So there is the blast and here is Heimer's. My friends, it is not a Heimer's system. As you can see, there are lots of the shrapnel around. So Heimer's should have caught fire, especially missiles, but it didn't happen. Also, if you look closely to it, the cockpit is kind of the strange one, as our colleagues from the Ukrainian Witness Telegram channel spotted. Plus, usually Heimer's been followed by the supply vehicle, but there are nothing around. So there is a high chance that this particular Heimer's is a decoy. I always say it as it is. For example, three or four days ago, Ukrainian army lost, really lost, one of the Heimer's systems. And I told you about it on my channel, but here I am not sure at all. Slovakia, many thanks for your support of Ukraine. Today there was a big meeting against Fika Faka Fisa. Around 5,000 people gathered in the main square. Hopefully Fika Faka Fisa will not rule for a very long time. Today Russia again targeted one of the civilian residential buildings in Krivi Many people were wounded and also lost their lives. You see, by the time Ukraine launches the strikes against the Russian military and oil infrastructure, Russia continued to target Ukrainian civilians. President Zelensky said today that Ukraine will respond to this attack. The satellite images show that North Korea continued to supply some of the ammunition to the Russian army. More container ships are delivering the artillery shells to Russia. My friends, for a few days I will be out of the Hromake because I am now in France in the local hotel. Sorry about it, but I took the rest of the gear to continue uploading daily updates. For today, those were the main news. My friends, now don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. Also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon or on a sponsorship of YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.